Howdy, Internet, and welcome to a course log I've waited oh so long to bring you. Today, we are playing my home course, Green Valley Country Club in Sassoon, California. I will be showcasing the back nine first, as it is a bit more scenic than the front. So, we are making the turn at two over this morning. Number 10 is a par 5 measuring 460 yards. Longer hitters will want to favor the right side of the fairway here if they want to reach the green in two. This hole is entirely about where you leave your second shot. Your approach shot, if not green side, will be a blind uphill shot. So, being on top of the hill is a premium. If this hole was a Halo 2 map, I would call it Ascension. No. Could have dead straight. You get hard. You got a good kick. You get hard again. Oh my god. That is so lucky. Off the cart path. So what is that got a suction cup on it? It's got a magnet. Oh magnet? Yeah. The green slopes massively from back to front with a pseudo middle shelf. I get extremely lucky that my ball bounced off the car path twice and settled here. However, I get way oh, too cute with this wedge and all that's left for me is to guide this within gimme range for par. I couldn't believe how fast that was. I, I hit it and I go, oh, you I, hit it halfway there. I, that's what I thought. Nice, easy par, Tom. Number 11 is one of the marquee holes at Green Valley, a weaving downhill par 4 towards the clubhouse. Do not miss right. You can get lucky and have it kick down the hillside, but if you're me, it never does. Smart player hooks it into the 10th fairway and has a pretty open and ideal look into this green. If this hole was one of those courses that names all their holes, I'd probably call it Cannonball Run. My tee shot goes just right of the car path and leaves me with this testy side hill shot. This green is a massive side hill, everything feeding down to this low side of the green. This hole is all about getting your par and getting out. Number 12 is a fun short par 4, curling around the hill you climb. Your tee shot must be accurate as bunkers guard the right side of the bend. <coughs> OB is reachable on either side of the hole. If this hole was an indie band concept album, I would call it Hairpin. You are then left with another blind uphill shot into a green that slopes back towards this front greenside bunker. Yeah. I left my approach here on the top of the slope, so I just had to touch this, feed it down towards the hole. Good save. 
a lot. My confusion here with the lack of break is because local knowledge is that every green breaks towards the local Costco, which I will now show with the location of the logo while on the green. Number 13 is one of the coolest holes on the property. At most 160 yards, all that lies between you and the green is a ravine. Leave it short, you face a tough stance and lie uphill. Go long and you may catch the hidden bunker that's just over the green. Otherwise, kiss your golf ball goodbye. I know this looks downhill, but after playing here for 14 years, I have to conclude that it's just not. Just like seven. Yeah, it's just like seven. It's a club short. My tee shot landed on the false front and rolled back down. Based on advanced analytics, decade golf, and what my Twitch chat tells me, I have a 32.8574% chance of getting up and down for par here. Now for the coolest tee shot of the day. This is the highest point on the golf course and it is as terrifying as it looks. Nothing but woods and a lost ball to the left, the 18th fairway to your right. Driver is not needed, but screw that, I got this TSR4, I'm gonna rip it. If this hole was a Tom Petty song, it'd be free falling. Your approach shot is into a green guarded by two bunkers on the left, and the green itself sloping heavily from left to right. Favor the left side, let the ball feed down to the flat side, and give yourself a reasonable uphill look for birdie. Or you can be me and hit your leg while you swing and have a 20 foot putt that breaks five feet right. Actually hit my leg coming through on it. Oh, oh you dog! Oh, I was no, waiting for no, it to step in! He's it went right around the edge of the hole. Oh, I was giving it the step away too. Now whip around to the par 5 15th, whose tee box is nestled in between the tennis courts and the driving range. Longer hitters should avoid taking driver as it'll end up in the crete that sections off the two halves of this hole. Also, don't block it, right? Because it'll go into the maintenance yard. Some lucky bounces off the tree and maybe a building left me here. In my endless wisdom, I thought three would again was a great idea. Fairway bunkers flank the lead up to the green, so layup shots must be placed with care. The green itself is one of the smallest on the course, so those daring to reach in two will need to be precise. That was a good idea. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I thought that was perfect. Oh. Otherwise, you can screw around and make a very sloppy bogey or worse. It's up to you. Costco's over there. Costco.
Number 16 in stark contrast to the rest of the course is the longest par four, maxing out at 460 yards from the tips. Seemingly always playing into the wind, it is a beast on windy days. Lose your tee shot right, you're back into the maintenance yard. Pull it left and you'll have to apologize to one of the retired folks who live on this hole for breaking their window. I like this hole so much that I wanted to hit two tee shots to, you know, really get my money's worth. The approach sees two bunkers on the right side and nothing but grass to the left, so favoring the left side of the screen is a smart play. Boy, that came up so hot. Should be okay. Yeah. That thing just flew, though. Don't, for some reason, hit it long and then have to try and get up and down from behind the green for double bogey. Everything on the screen slopes away from you and it'll make life very hard for you. Number 17 is a demanding par 3, which from the back tees is the longest par 3 on the course at a terrifying 212 yards. The front part of the screen is a bowl where most tee shots will feed to, so if the pin is in the back, like it is today, getting on the proper level is a great shot. I once made birdie on this hole from the back tees in a junior tournament, having to hit driver off the tee due to a stiff headwind. I was a lot better at golf back then. I had to hit it hard. Uh, <laughs> did that go left? Son? Yeah, it just, a, just a little bit. Just a little. I would have slammed it like Angan. Yeah, mine was a hot rod. Yeah. <laughs> that then brings us to the final hole, a tight par four that attracts your gaze to the fact that there's a road and the driving range immediately to your right. There's no shame in hitting it in the 14th fairway. It is a much better alternative than hitting someone's car. It would be encouraged that you don't hit your three wood, that you've only missed right all day, because why would you do such a stupid thing? Have you no course management, Thomas? Bonked one pretty good. By the grace of the golf gods, my ball stayed in bounds, but I'm quite literally not out of the woods yet. Still not out of the woods yet. This is how your round can end sometimes at Green Valley. 
The final stretch is demanding, and if you're not on your game, the course will have its way with you. Alas, it is an endlessly fun course to play. It is not exceedingly long, making up for this with complex screens that will take you years to learn if you want to make putts. Next time, we'll see the front nine, which again isn't as diverse as the back nine, but it still has its merits. I appreciate you watching this back nine collapse. Make sure to like, subscribe so you can see the front nine, and leave a comment on what your favorite hole was. And until next time, stay safe, work hard, be proud of yourself, and above all else, please be lovely people. Peace. That was fun.